you can see, this is a desktop here from QNAP. Now, full disclosure, this is an Intel-based QNAP that we're going to be using, just so I can show you all three of them and some of the little differences between them. So what we'll do is we're going to open up all three apps on the same on the screen, and therefore, therefore give you an idea about why they differ. Now, you may notice at the top of the video that I wasn't exactly over the top complimentary about Linux Station. I don't dislike Linux Station. I think it's a very important and useful application, but for the purpose of this video, it is kind of limited how much I can show you. Um, for Linux Station help, um, for example, there are different kinds of Linux-based kernel that you can install. And whichever one you do go for, you will have to download it from the linuxstation.org website. It's automatic, so if you click install there, it will install a Linux-based VM on the NAS for you to access uh, over the network or indeed the internet. And if you want to utilize an entire Linux-based OS, that's a full desktop uh, with access to memory, RAM, have the whole thing set up from the ground up. So anywhere in the world that you are, you can access your operating system and the whole desktop. Linux Station could well be the one for you. However, it is worth mentioning that you will need you know, quite reasonable resources to run this. You will need at least a dual core Intel based CPU and at least two gig of DDR3 memory. You can get away with less than that, but for optimal output, that is advised. So again, installing of those is that simple. You install them, you set up the, uh, the Linux based VM for the first time, and it does install very quickly indeed. Now, once we go to the main two, because these two, let's close that Linux station, these two are aimed at people that want a different kind of virtual experience. And what we'll try and do is we'll try and get them both on the same screen, if the QNAP will let me, because my screen recording software is making my mouse tough to look at, tough to look at. So we'll pop that there. On the right hand side, we'll stick container station. Now they do kind of look similar at this point, but it's worth mentioning that they're really not. Man, this software does not want to let me. I can't minimize the window any more than that. Would you believe it? Okay, well, do you know what? Let's just go the full hog. Now, virtualization station is if you have an, at least, once again, an Intel dual-core base CPU, ideally a quad-core, and uh, at least 2 gig of DDR3 memory, 4 gig, ideally. Now, with this, you can install everything from a Windows-based virtual machine, so that's Windows 7, 8, 10, and the works, as well as an Android-based VM, and of course a Linux-based VM too. If you want to install an Android-based VM, you will need an ISO that contains, or a system image that contains the Android software. It's completely for free. You can find that online for the latest version of Windows. I mean, that's an Android. Get that in, uh, downloaded, put onto an image file. So an ISO or IMG, put that on the NAS and then bri bri and browse and find it. What happened there with my mouse? And with a virtual machine manager, you can assign everything. So for a start, you can highlight the kind of um, operational platform you're going to be utilizing, thereby uh, dictating how the VM uh, virtualization, virtualization Station 3 works. On top of that, you can assign how many CPU cores, and I'm using the quad core here, as well as the amount of memory you install in. You have that image-based CD to use, and of course, you decide how much storage space you want to use and create a folder on the NAS for your files to live on. Once you've got that done, you can also assign where exactly the NAS, um, the VM will be accessible from on the network. And of course, you can make it internet accessible too. And finally, you can add a password here at the bottom. So again, it's very straightforward. So if we put in test, we'll put in test. Now I've set one of these up on the channel before, but we're gonna carry on doing it anyway. We'll make it a Windows based one. Actually, do you know what? Let's go for generic. Um, we'll make it one call, we'll give it one gig of memory and we'll see if we have to do any other stuff. No, nope, we're gonna to have to get away with at least assigning some space. So we'll pop it inside the admin folder there. And we're not gonna put password on it, though of course you can. And there you go, our VM is now ready to go. And from here, we can upload a CD, a digital base CD. And there's all manner of things we can do if we get this VM up and running. We can see what the VM looks like in real world, but of course, because there's no, I haven't uploaded a CD inside, this virtual machine, this PC that lives on the NAS, accessible over the internet or the network, is no good to me at the moment without that CD. Now if I uploaded a CD inside the CD tray, so in other words, an ISO, a digital CD, or if I've got a DVD drive attached to the NAS, I could pop a CD in here 
and boot this like I would a physical machine. And that's really it. I mean, you can make it more complex with the likes of Windows Storage Server. You can even talk about you know, different versions of Windows and different kinds of access and lowering and heightening uh, the color scheme and the resolution with which to lower the amount of data being consumed when streaming this. The amount of data you're using to look at a VM should not really be more than you have watching a YouTube video such as this, because all you're doing is streaming a visual source. So it's no different than a live stream, really. But if we force shut down um, this VM, we'll delete it real quick. And this will give us the ability, let's remove the files and everything, because remember you can take images, you can snapshot your VM, so create multiple versions or return to a given point. And it's ideal for bench testing um, whole scale upgrades and firmware updates, as well as bench testing some software that you've created on Windows or Android platforms. So Virtualization Station is definitely the full bells and whistles um, VM device. Of course, you can restore or purchase ready-to-go VMs. Once again, just like the free VM here from Windows, um, you can actually install a copy of Windows ready to go immediately, and they'll last for 90, day, 90 days, whereupon you just you know register it as you would any copy of Windows, and there you go, you're good to go. So if you do own a, Synology, um, a QNAP NAS that has Virtualization Station open to you, if it's one of the supported platforms, you can bench test a Windows VM almost immediately and again that does include the mobile one too so we have banged on about virtualization station for a while let's move to container station now straight away as mentioned in my earlier video one of the big advantages of container station is it doesn't need anywhere near the hardware resources of virtualization station the way to imagine it is on the bottom level you have the NAS. So you have all the hardware inside the NAS, the CPU and the memory, and of course the NAS software, in this case QNAP QTS. With a VM you have another whole layer that is virtualization station, and that supports the VM, in the case of earlier on, the Windows or Android based VM. With container station, the container station runs the VMs in of itself. It removes an entire layer of support and um, deployment and thereby makes the resources required to run a container uh, application much much lower so for example if you want to create a container containers aren't like um, whole VMs they won't um, occupy your system resources in the way that a VM does so we talked about IOT and or Internet of Things based applications before this gives you the ability to install free and paid for IOT software to integrate with your smart devices, your smart light bulbs, smart plugs, and everything in your home or office. On top of that, we have containers. And a lot of these containers will let you run either wholesale operating systems or individual applications. So say you've got an app that you want to test, a small, tiny app, and you don't want to have to go to the trouble of installing on a whole new system. Container Station lets you run multiple tiny apps all side by side and all of them in an isolated manner. They can't affect anything else on the network. They can only exist within the container. The same thing goes with Docker. So a lot of these um, apps that you're get included for free, these are a lot of these are for supporting and running other applications and databases such as MySQL and of course the popular WordPress. There's more down here with regard to Linux Station to run these different VMs at the bottom. And a number of these actually work almost identically to that of the Linux Station that we saw earlier on. That's the main difference between them. The fact that with Container Station, once you install a number of these, you can run many, many different Container Station applications and softwares in a way that in VM um, Virtualization Station, you can only run a handful. And again, you can create your own, you can go for preset ones, you can import and export ones for others, and you can create other images, volumes, and containers for each individual application. It is a versatile tool, and it's something I think a number of um, different um, NAS brands have adopted in their own way, but QNAP really have cornered the market on this one, and they do it better than anyone else. And even in some such a complex subject, it still managed to be not too intimidating. So like GitLab, everyone's heard of GitLab. It's one of these real standalone ones where 
it not only do you have access to a multitude of other um, Docker-based applications, but also it runs very well on its own on the NAS. So straight away, when you get into it, it's very straightforward assigning ports to make sure you've got network access and more. It, it's that straightforward. And the same thing goes for a number of these first and third party ones from the application builders themselves. So what it comes down to is do you need wholesale virtualization or not? If you are only familiar with the likes of Windows or Android and you want to be able to utilize these in the most straightforward, stable manner, Virtualization Station is the one for you. Because Virtualization Station has that extra layer that is designed to deal with these more mainstream uh, operating systems and applications. However, if you want to utilize individual apps, if you want to run multiple small apps at once, Container Station is the one for you for bench testing and isolate envir isolated environment testing. And finally, if you know your way around Linux or you want the, uh, the least resource hungry virtual machine for you to access when you're on the go or when you're at home or the office, Linux Station is definitely the go-to. And remember, you can only get these three together on QNAP. It's not supported by any other NAS brand, although a couple of the others like the Acus and Acer Store have got pretty close indeed. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about these subjects, visit me at nascompares.com. If you're wondering about the right NAS for you and the right software to run on that NAS, then visit the NAS expert at span.com. And finally, if you've got a question about any of these, or maybe something you want to cover in future, send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.